All right, hey guys, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. This is part of the Quick Tip series on my channel, and today I'm going to be showing you guys something relatively new in the trunk and something really, really cool. So if you all have never used uh, Cycles Render before, you might want to go check out my other Cycles tutorial I have on my Quick Tips channel. I don't know if it's been uploaded at the time this video will go up. Well, I hope it will be at least. <laughs> Uh, it would be silly of me not to, but I might just forget and space and it totally won't be uploaded, but hopefully it will be. So, we're going to go into Blender, and for this I will warn you, um, you're going to need a Blender version 2.64.5 uh, or after, I think. It's, the, it's basically your version has to have cycles with motion blur in it, because that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing a sort of motion blur, except it's going to be slightly different. What we're going to be doing is long exposure. Long exposure is a tactic, and uh, I'll just talk while I load up a long exposure image. Long exposure is basically a tactic or technique that photographers use to show movement over a long period of time. You can usually see these in various places. Um, it's usually highways at night, but it can also be done during the day. It's what gives water a natural flowing thing. I'm just going to show you something I've taken on my Facebook. Um, but yeah, so you can see here that these cars have come down the highway and they've left a long streak light trail. And people have been always wanting to do this for a while um, in Blender, and the internal render never quite supported it. You had to do a long, complicated thing with particles or using proxies, and proxies and particles are a very confusing thing. But what we can do now in Cycles is very, very simple, and it's using the motion blur. It's sort of cheating, and does it work in all situations? No. But does it work in most situations? Yes. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to go here back into Blender and we're going to add a mesh and we're going to add an icosphere. And we also want to make sure that we're switched over to the cycles render engine. And we're not going to worry about our render settings just yet because we're going to go over and do some things first. So we go over to the materials pane, we're going to add a new material, and we're going to add a material that's in admission. And I'm going to make it about 15 I think would be a good one. So uh, we're going to make it really, really, really bright, um, just all the way up to the white. And then uh, actually, we won't mess with the uh, colors just yet, because uh, I'm going to show you all what to do in a minute. But we're going to move that to layer 2. And now on layer 1, which we're on currently, we're going to add a plane. Now we're going to scale this plane up to 5. And then we're going to go into the particle settings. Now in particle settings, we're just going to add a new particle system. Don't worry about all these things. Um, what we are going to do, I think, is we're going to add uh, change this from Newtonian to voids. And I know this, what pops up, might look really confusing to you. Don't worry about it. Um, we're going to just minus this separate. And then we're going to add, or first we're going to go up to the 3D interface. We're going to add an empty plane axis. We're going to move this up five. And then we're going to go back into our particle system. Sorry if I'm going a little fast. I'll slow down. Um, and we're going to add a goal. And now our goal is going to be our empty. So we're just going to click empty there, and we're going to type predict. You don't have to do predict, but it does help a little bit for what we're about to be doing. So now if we run our particle simulation, you see they kind of gather up, and then they're kind of moving towards it. But uh, the lifetime is not long enough. And what we're going to do is we're going to going to change this lifetime to about 200. And then we're going to see here, and yeah, you can quickly come up, and you can see that they all come up and kind of converge around it, and then they just kind of stick there. We're going to make this lifetime random 1. And this lifetime is going to be 400, actually. So now, if we move it up, you can see they come up here, and then they just kind of all day or we'll watch it render. It's fair, or not render, but uh, figure out where it's going. And it's fairly, fairly slow. But um, yeah, I mean, it kind of happens over here, and you'll see all these movement. They all come together. Um, but yeah, um, they come together like that. Actually, we'll probably make this 200, because I think that will make more sense. Yeah, ooh, okay, let's not run that simulation too fast. Um, okay, so um, we're going to change the random size all the way up to 1, and we're going to make this start also 100. Um, and down here, we're going to say max airspeed will be 30, and min airspeed will be 5. And now if we do this, I think it'll be a little bit faster. Oh, well, it'll do a little vortex thing, so that is um, interesting. I <laughs> didn't quite plan on that, but that's okay. We can We can work with this a little bit. Okay, so, um, well, actually, I think, oh, it's because main air speed's at 1, uh, so we'll change it to 0. That's that's where I did wrong. Um, so, yeah, so you can see here, they all kind of come up like this, and they kind of form a little group going towards the thing. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down a little bit more. We're just going to close down the void brain and um, minimize the physics. Um, and we're going to go over here to object. 
and now we're going to choose our icosphere that we had earlier and uh, scale uh, actually will be checked yeah um, and then so we have size and this size will change to 0 0.002 so that will be they'll be fairly small I might change that up a little bit more 04 uh, size 0.04 I'll do it size 0 0.01 so that should be pretty good uh, actually we'll be pretty bad 0 0.03 after 4 yep okay so 0 0.03 will do it so now we have this, and you're probably wondering what the hell is happening, you're like very confused, what are all these things coming up here? I know this is a particle system, but really what is happening here? It looks pretty cool, but we haven't really done anything with it yet. And if we were to just close out the animations player and look at the rendered view, you'd see, yeah, we still don't have that long exposure look. Where is it coming in? Well, it's going to come in in just a minute. So we're going to go back over to the solid view, and now we're going to go into uh, selecting our icosphere over here in the um, outliner. And we're going to click on it, and we're going to see our admission here. And we're gonna, now we're going to go over into the node editor really quick. If you didn't know, Cycles uses nodes to make materials. And we're going to do some really cool things. And this is really one of the two reasons why you need the most recent build. We're going to go to Input, Particle Info. And then we're going to go over to Converter, and we're going to type in Map. And it also, the one really nice thing about this build is you do Shift A, and you don't know where the node is that you're looking for, you can simply type in Search, and then just type in what it's called. So like you do Add and it'll add the shader, uh, whatever. But so we're gonna go over here to math converter and we're going to use divide. And then we're going to divide the age by the lifetime. And then next what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread this out a little bit. We're gonna go back to a converter. We're gonna do color ramp, come up here and we're gonna change this black to a, I don't know, say a kind of a reddish dark color. And then over here, it's gonna be a, a yellowish kind of color. Actually, we'll change this to be a little bit brighter and a little bit more uh, pink. Yeah, this is gonna look a bit weird, but uh, hopefully it'll still work. And now we're gonna make sure the value is changed to the fact, um, factor over here. And then in the color, we're going to drag it over to admission. And you can also drag the color to the strength, but we're just gonna leave the strength as it is. All right, so now if we render it out, you can see that actually here, let's bake this thing again a little bit. And then baking is basically just go through here. And, and yeah, I know it looks weird thing looking. Okay, so we'll just stop it right about there because that's where we bake to. So if you look at it now from the side, you'll notice that these ones really close down here are pink and the ones up here are kind of white. That's because our thing is actually too bright. So we're going to change this down to about 10. That might work. Uh, no, it's still not quite there. And I think we might actually just change this yellow or tan over to like a blue, say. And yeah, I think we quickly noticed that it'll start to happen there. Yeah, there we go. Um, and also make sure that this is not going to be um, five strength, perhaps. Uh, and this is just a little experimentation. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there we go. So as it as it gets older and older, they'll start to fade to blue. We have this really big cloud over here. But um, yeah. So you're still not seeing that long exposure effect. And now here's where the really cool stuff comes in. We're gonna go to world. We're gonna go change this to black. Make sure you use nodes, no ambient occlusion. And then we're gonna go over here. Uh, 100 actually I'm gonna go ahead and do actually yeah yeah I'll do 100 and I have GPU compatible on uh, you could use open shading language if you want but you don't have to there is a way to do this with open shading language but that'll be in another tutorial um, change the compression to zero doesn't really matter and now we're gonna go over here to this box that says motion blur and we're gonna check that and then we're gonna drop it down and you see the shutter is 0.5 this means the time taken between frames so this is gonna go for half a frame it's gonna leave the shutter open and how long exposure is accomplished is how long the shutter is open that's basically the time the camera starts to take the picture to the time, time the camera stops. For most pictures, you have 1 60th, 1 100th, 1 200th of a shutter speed. It's very, very quick. Ch -ch -ch -ch. That's the sound of the camera, right? But when you have motion blur or long exposure, you typically have a longer shutter, like ch -ch -ch. So you definitely have two, three, four seconds. And each frame here is 1 30th of a second, but um, motion blur is not calculated the exact same way, so it's going to be a little bit different. So we're going to put 15 for our, um, or 10, I guess, 10 for our shutter value. Yeah, um, not 15, but 10. Uh, mm, whatever. And so uh, we'll just leave everything else here. Exposure 1, transparent, yeah, uh, we don't need to check that. And so now if you go back to the rendered view, you're saying, oh, well, this still doesn't look quite like it, although it does look pretty cool, like some kind of rave is going on there. Yes, it doesn't have the long exposure because it doesn't, uh, Cycles doesn't calculate motion blur in the preview. It only calculates in the actual render. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go to sampling and we're going to change the render to 
eh, we'll say 100. I probably won't let it go all that time, but um, might as well just do it until it looks good enough for us to see it. And now we're going to render the image. Oh, oh no camera, of course. <laughs> Get the most basic tools when you're doing a tutorial. Um, so grabbing it, double Z, adding a camera, moving it up. Uh, let's go into our view and make sure it will pull it up a little bit right here. And so now we're just going to, oh yeah, quickly, um, this is not a thing that's necessary, but I like to do it. If you go to cache under your particle setting for the plane and you just type bake really quickly, um, it just helps us know where the particles are gonna go. Um, it helps uh, Blender know and it makes the renders more accurate. Um, and you can see, like I said, it looked like where, where we thought we knew where it was gonna be, but in actuality we didn't. So we're gonna move it to about this frame here. And if your setup's not the exact same, that's okay. Blender's random. This happens. And this is just really to show you the technique. So now we're going to click Render Image. And it's going to start doing this. And this version of Blender is a slight bit different the way I have it configured. I have it configured instead of doing progressive renders uh, like old Cycles does, I have it doing tiles. I just find tiles to look really cool. But already you're starting to see this long path here. And yeah, this stuff is really rewarding. Um, well, sort of. It, it looks much cooler when you see it here than when you see it in the viewport and it's just a really really cool looking thing the one thing with particles is the uh, calculations for the motion blur is not perfect it's still being worked on hopefully within uh, 2.66 and 2.67 they'll be able to fix that so that the motion blur is more uh, of a curve here because currently if you do anything more than 10 um, shutter speed you'll just end up with a pretty much straight line from the last point the farthest point away to the closest point at that time, uh, frame-wise. So, yep, you can start to see it here, and uh, I'll let it render and uh, come back to you all when it's finished. All right, guys, so uh, back. Um, just It's finishing up rendering, and I'll just talk a little bit. So, yeah, I think the end result looks pretty cool, kind of ravey, black light feel, pretty cool. Um, and so, yeah, that's about all you need to know for this. Um, it's pretty simple, uh, pretty straightforward. If you want to do a little bit more, um, I know that you can get an, a special add-on online. If I have time or if I can remember where the link is, I'll put a link in the description. But uh, the chances are I probably won't be able to. But you can probably look it up on Google and find it right away. There is a uh, add-on that allows you to constrain particles to curves. And you can make all sorts of cool curve things using random numbers to generate these colors and do a bunch of cool stuff. I have, I think, one or two examples of this posted on my channel. And at some point, I'll probably post a few more. But this has tons of applications. I mean, you can make long exposure pictures. You can make sparklers for like Fourth of July kind of things like I've done um, on my channel. It's really, really cool. Um, and you can just do so much other stuff with voids, particles, especially as they all group together and kind of make this cool groupy fish, neon fish kind of feel. But yeah, there's just so much stuff you can do with it. And it's really cool. So do uh, feel free to experiment with this. Don't uh, try and con conform yourself or contain yourself to just this tutorial. Just branch out, try things, do random things. If they don't work, they don't work. It's fine. It's on the computer. It's Blender. It's not. What's the worst that can happen? You go download another copy of Blender because you messed yours up or something. I, how how you would do that, I wouldn't know. But you could do it. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. So that's all. And uh, thank you for watching. And see you next time.